Hello and welcome to this walkthrough on Holder. Today we will cover all the elements of its interface and we will hear how it sounds like. If you are interested in understanding how Holder works and what lie behind its user interface, check out the video description. You will find a blog post related to this video. Let's begin! Holder samples and stores 8 sound slices whenever it receives a trig. We can manually send our trigs or we can automate them by defining how much time should pass between one trig and another. By default the behavior is automatic, but for clarity let's disable this feature and stick with manual sampling. Now, whenever we push the trig button, Holder will store and process the 8 sound slices. Now, for the playback it's a slightly different story. With this button here we choose to play just the first slice. As soon as we play our track and sample our 8 slices, Holder will play and hold the first one in the buffer. Let's hear how it sounds like by removing the dry sound. We will now listen just to Holder. You can see that if we push the button again, we will sample 8 new slices and Holder will instantly play and hold the first one. If we stop our track, the playback will stop as well and the stored samples will be discarded unless we activate the CODA function. Holder, as the name suggests, holds a sample until we send another trig, as displayed by the animated spectrogram. However, we can also manually clear the buffer by pressing this button here. So far we heard just the first stored sound slice, but there are 7 more. Let's see how to hear them. Holder gives us the ability to play the 8 samples in two ways, in order or randomly. In either case, we need to define a rate at which Holder should move from one sample to another. The default option is in sync with the DO tempo. We can choose any time interval to create a rhythmic texture. For example, if we set to 1 8 and to linear behavior, Holder will cycle through our 8 samples every 8th note. Whenever we send a new trick to the sampling section, the playback will start back from the first sample. The random mode works in the same way, but instead of moving through all the samples, it plays them back randomly. Playing with different time resolutions is an excellent way to obtain new rhythmic textures, but we can get even better results by automating the sampling stage as well. This setting here allows us to define the trig tempo, which is the rate at which Holder will fill the buffer with 8 new samples. This is when things get interesting. We can assign two different time signatures to the trig and the playback sections and obtain some fascinating rhythms. For example, if we set our sample rate to 2 quarters and our playback rate to 1 eighth, Holder will refresh its buffer every two quarter notes, so our playback section will change samples every four eighth notes. By playing with precise time signatures, we can obtain some peculiar effects. In this example here, we set both the sampling and the playback time interval to one bar length. In this way, Holder will play the previous bar's slice in the new one, creating a sort of harmonic counterpoint. The opposite idea works great too. We can set the sample and playback times to odd numbers so that the holder will always sample its 8 sound slices from a different point of the riff. It is an excellent way to add variation to a relatively static and repetitive melody like this one. However, we set our playback rate higher than our sampling rate, we'll hear just one sample, because the buffer will refresh faster than the playback section. It is also possible to remove the synchronization with the DO tempo and set holder strings to absolute values. 
It is very useful, for example, also with drones and other non-rhythmic pieces. In our blog post, we compared our eight sound slices, which holder converts into frequency tables, to eight pictures that we can play back as a stop motion film. Again, you can find the link to the blog post in the description to further explore this topic. After converting our eight sound slices into their frequency tables, holder allows us to add some actual video effects to them through the Dronizer section. The first effect is the void parameter. It adds some black lines to our frequency tables, thus removing some frequencies and creating some holes in the spectral content. With the void control, we define the width and spread of such holes. Since these holes are linearly spread across the whole spectrum, they won't match any harmonic series. The result is a balanced sound treatment that ultimately can lead to metallic sounds. The swarm section injects some noise into the data, adding some turbulence to our sound. To continue with our picture analogy, we can think of it as a sort of film grain or static noise on a TV. Finally, the blur section morphs one of the eight slices into the following one. It can make Holder lose its distinct rhythmic texture and creates a broad, resonant reverb. A visual equivalent is like shooting a video with a very slow frame rate. By combining all the older functions, we can achieve a broad palette of sounds, from rhythmic and glitchy textures to resonant counterpoints to even wide and algid reverbs. If you want to read more about Holder, feel free to check out the blog post in the description. And if you want to know more about our instruments or if you found this video useful, please consider subscribing to our channel and staying in touch with us through our social media.